Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can get the IP address of a user visiting your web page. So you can obtain the IP address of a user server side. So there's two ways of doing that. Either you make a request to someone else's server or a request to a server that you have created yourself. So we'll start with the first one. The nice thing about making a request to someone else's server is that it doesn't require any backend programming on your part. So I'm going to be using this service, IPFI API. There are other options available, so you might want to check those out. I'm using this one in this tutorial because it's free to make requests to, and also the response is very simple. So if you make a request to this endpoint, you will get a response back as plain text with the IP address you are making the request from. So I'm going to make a request to this endpoint in JavaScript and the request is going to be made as soon as the HTML page in which it is embedded loads. So this will reveal the IP address of the user when they visit the page. So my preferred method for making a request in JavaScript is to use the native fetch function. So for a get request like we're making here, you just include the endpoint in the parentheses as a string. If the response is successful, then this then method is going to be fired and inside the function that you place in there, the result is going to be available to you, which at first is a response object with a readable stream on it. So to read a readable stream, you apply a method to the response object. And in this case, I want to read the result of the readable stream into text format because the IP address is in plain text. And then in the following then method, we have available to us the return statement of the previous function, which is the IP address itself. So I'll log that to the console. And best practice, you also want to include a catch statement in case there is an error, in which case you're going to get some details about the error logged to the console. So I'll save this now, and if it's successful, then you should see my IP address in the console log. So I'm running live server here, so I'll refresh it, and you see it comes back pretty quickly. So this is a nice and easy way of getting the IP address of a user accessing your page. But of course, the downside is that you are dependent upon a third-party service to get this IP address, and you are also making a request to another server that will contain some user data, which in this era of strict privacy laws, you may not want to do in production. An alternative is that you set up your own server that will do exactly this. So you can do this with JavaScript running in the node environment on the server side. So I've already created a server here in this app.js file. So I'll close this sidebar so you can see it a little better and zoom out because this is the entire code that will run the server. So I've already installed Express and the cause package via NPM in this project folder. I've set the port to either be adaptive to a free port or run on port 3000. The next line is important if you want to run your server on shared hosting, trust proxy, because quite a lot of the time you will be running from behind a proxy and if that is the case and you don't include this line, then you may get local host from the server itself. So you want the IP address of the requester. So you need to say that you trust proxy to get that information. I've also configured the cause so anyone can access this API. So if you execute cause inside app.use, that's going to allow requests from any origin. So we don't get any cause errors. The actual code for getting the IP address is incredibly simple. So when a request comes in, you access the IP property on the request. I'm saving that and then sending it back to the requester. And then finally, I'm setting the server to start up. So I'll start running this server locally. The folder containing app.js is on my desktop. And to run, I execute app. So now it's up and running on port 3000. So I'm going to access localhost port 3000 here. 
and the path to the API is at forward slash API. So if I access that, you see that I'm getting this back. So you might think this is an error, colon colon one, but it isn't. It's an abbreviation for localhost. So this is happening because the server is running on my machine and the request is also coming from me. So instead of using my public IP address, what I get back is my localhost address. But to show you that it will work, I deployed it earlier on my shared hosting account. So I created a subdomain find hyphen IP dot open JavaScript dot info forward slash API. And there you can see it's returning my IP address to me. Now, if you're using the same solution as we were earlier with fetch, all you need to do is to make your request to this endpoint on your own server now. So I'll copy and paste this code here instead of making a request to APIFI, I'm going to make that to my own server and also comment out the original third party code. So now if I refresh, you see I'm getting the same result back as was from the third party service, but now it's coming back from the server that I deployed. Now, as you saw on the server side, I'm using the express library for node. If you're not running Express, if you create a server using pure node, then the IP address of the requester is available on rec.socket.remoteAddress. So this simple rec.ip, it works if you're using Express. If not, then you need to access this other property. Now, in case you want to use this solution in your own project, but you've never set up a node server before, then I'll just show you quickly how I did this. So I did this via cPanel in my shared hosting and I went down to software, set up Node.js app. And then when I created this app, I created a subdomain and then chose this subdomain as the URL for my app, the application root. So this looks like a domain, but it's actually a folder that was created automatically in the root directory of my shared hosting when I created this new subdomain. And it's in this folder that I uploaded my app, including the app.js file and also package.json. So it's very important that you include that. I named app.js as the startup file. And you need to make sure if you're doing it this way, that you run npm install when you've set this up. So this will install express cause and any other libraries that you are using without you having to upload the node modules folder to the server. Finally, I set an environment variable here that is port 3000, which is the port that I set in app.js for my server to run on. So as you can see, it's a bit more work setting up your own server, but once you've done that, then you're no longer dependent upon a third party service to get the IP and you can also handle the user data in-house on your own server. So that is it for this tutorial on finding out a user's IP using JavaScript. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.